All right, uh, welcome everyone. Good morning or good evening, depending on time zone. Um, you are here for the presentation about CryptPad. Uh, Adrian is already here, Aaron. Uh, we hope he will arrive soon. He's just right now at the main station. <laughs> so uh, for the other half of the presentation, we hope he will arrive. Uh, so let's just start. Please have a small applause for Adrian. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, um, we are, well, Aaron and uh, I were uh, we are talking about CryptPad. Uh, talk is called Crypto, uh, CryptPad Practice and Theory. So I will start with the first part uh, about first uh, of the pirate pad. Then I will yeah, talk ending uh, ending of an error. Then getting started with CryptPad, where I describe uh, how I getting to know uh, the CryptPad and I start to work with it. And then uh, I will. Uh, I talk a bit about migration strategy, uh, strategies. So yeah, who am I? I'm uh, Adrian, computer science student here in Karlsruhe. Um, I'm part of the Pirate Party of Germany, uh, deputy chairman for the Pirate Party Baden-Württemberg. Um, I'm one of the core administrators for the Bundes-IT who um, run the whole infrastructure needed by the complete uh, party. And uh, I'm kind of the lead of the um, LVBV IT, so the IT of the Pirate Party Baden-Württemberg. Then, yeah, I've been uh, like seven years administrator uh, in my school in Lower Saxony, where I come from originally. I'm uh, interested in systems engineering. Uh, my political focus is uh, on digitalization and education. And I've been administrating stuff since I can think, I, uh, I guess. So, yeah. Then, uh, getting started on the Pirate Pad. The Pirate Pad is one of the world's largest Etherpad and Etherpad Pro instances. Uh, we have like a 350 gigabyte MySQL database in the background of uh, this Pirate Pad running. So, the link is piratepad, uh, also piratenpad.de. Um, we have uh, uh, over 65 registered users uh, currently at, that wasn't intended, uh, currently over uh, 65,000 uh, registered users at our Etherpad Pro. So Etherpad Pro is like a team solution for where you get a team and put pads in there. So, yeah, pads, um, like text documents where you can edit with multiple persons. Uh, decentralized on. Um, we have a total of 100, uh, oh yeah, there was a total of over 100,000 users registered on this Etherpad Pro, but some accounts of our, most of the accounts uh, were deleted. Um, these uh, users are organized into, um, that's the current uh, yeah, that's the current number in 24,064 uh, teams, which is a huge, uh, which is a huge number. Um, we have a total of, yeah, you see the numbers there, they're just a half hour old. So, um, yeah, 485,000 uh, light pads and 328,000 pro pads, which is really one of the largest instances and also the devs of the Etherpad Pro, which is discontinued, or the devs of the Etherpad Lite said already that we are crazy to still maintain and run this, uh, with this thing because it's so a high workload on our infrastructure. So yeah, ending off an error, talking about a high workload on our infrastructure. Um, the whole infrastructure is very expensive for us running these pads. We have uh, yeah, a MySQL cluster with two, uh, two nodes running uh, the stuff for redundancy, backups. Uh, the database dies regularly because uh, how the Etherpad stores um, data is putting 
every keystroke the user makes inside a JSON file and then like putting a batch of 70 key presses inside one JSON array and put it as one row inside our database. So if you have hundreds of users working on the same time on different pads, it just puts data into the database all the time and we have sometimes or like twice a week if the database uh, if the database dies we have about 200 megabytes of mysql backlog we have just to delete because we can't apply them so yeah um like i mentioned before the etherpad pro is discontinued so well, for some years now and um we with our infrastructure uh, structure, we cannot upgrade the uh, Etherpad Lite. Etherpad Lite is actively developed, but um, we are running a pretty old version and we can't update that because we have some custom changes to the uh, Etherpad uh, stuff and it doesn't uh, fit in. We have to run uh, old software versions and yeah, the whole system is like a mess and uh, field of patches or nginx config looks horribly because we have to uh, just de uh, block links which uh, can be used to exploit or download even the whole database so it's really a mess and we are very uh, unhappy to have this stuff still running that was yeah um, the shutdown of the pirate pad is on the 16th of june so in like a bit more than two weeks, I have the honor to just say shut down and it's finished. Um, yeah, we are searching. We uh, we started the whole pirate pet stuff for our IT infrastructure or generally for the party, so we can work together on uh, press statements, work together on the party program and stuff. So it was mainly it was started at that but it developed as yeah one a free instance you don't have to log in you can just type stuff in we had already the police confiscating our servers <laughs> because people put uh, stuff in there that didn't belong normally there so yeah um so we searched for a software which is actively developed and which will not soon be discontinued like etherpad pro is um, we have the need for real-time collaboration, but this real-time collaboration, you can say, oh, just have only Office, or oh, just, had, uh, just have uh, like a next cloud, or just have like Google Docs, but um, we need low cost on operation, and uh, it should be data protection friendly. So maybe if um, something illegal is stored on through the um, whole other pet stuff or on the pet stuff um, we can just say we don't know what's on our servers so you can't take them away um, yeah and one huge problem of our pirate pad is that yeah the 350 gigabytes of database and like 20 or 30 gigabytes of logs we have around just from the last week so um yeah it's we want to use the pads as a short term use so you create a pad work on something together and then afterwards export it to like our wiki or export it to our red mine which we use for tracking protocols of um of yeah, for tracking protocols so um just for short term use so the ability to simply delete to simply delete files or pads from the server. With the JSON stuff hanging around in the database with the other pads, yeah, we have like uh, timestamps when changes were made, but because the changes were just put in together on one table row and merged, so it isn't practical to delete old pads because there's <laughs> too, uh, the risk is too high that something can break. And um, one problem we have, yeah, we have a sinking, a sinking account of membership and with that some of our administrators we had, like for the mail service, just 
died or overworked. Ah, uh, yeah, one or two actually died um, because of the stress and stuff. Um, but uh, also our so we are currently like uh, one person working for the uh, working for the party is em um, is employed and uh, like me and another one uh, another guy called Loki um, currently the core administrators and then persons from one database specialist uh, who does stuff for now and then so yeah easy to administrate and the possibility for like a new person just here you have the crypt pad, so uh, maintain it, and it's not a much, uh, not a lot of work. So yeah, yeah. Um, we thought about a lot of collaboration tools, and we had really a big discussion also inside the party. Um, hi, Aaron. Um, yeah, we just. Is there some definition of short-term use? Um, short, yeah. Um, the question was if there is a definition of short-term use. Definition of short-term use is really work on something, and after that, if there's not, uh, like we defined for us, 30 days after the last edit, we think uh, a pad is not uh, worked on, so we, dele uh, we plan to delete it in the future. But it's currently not implemented, but uh, CryptPad has the possibility to do that. So yeah, because of the data, uh, data protection stuff, um, we chose CryptPad to use. Just come to the front. <laughs> um, yeah, we uh, chose CryptPad. And it has yeah, some other advances, uh, advances um, for us, which we discuss, uh, discovered uh, more lately after we installed it. Uh, so yeah, when uh, we got started, I was uh, fresh in the IT administration team. Was like a half year ago, yeah, on the end of November. It was, hey, we want to run CryptPad, so that's your job. Just do, uh, just do it. And we talked about uh, about that a lot and planned stuff. And we had, yeah, um, we had some points we uh, wanted to have. So customization for our instance with our custom logo on it, with uh, our custom color scheme and stuff like that, but also transparency. We as the Pirate Party uh, live transparency uh, as every uh, session where we chairmen talk about stuff. The most part of it is publicly available. So for that we already uh, also said that's infrastructure, we want to make, make it public so everyone can see how we work and what we customized. Um, but we have, uh, also problem is we have encapsulated infrastructure, so how it's done. And it's not just open FTP, go on the server, put the files on and you're, uh, you're ready. Um, but you really have to operate completely on the server via SSH and VPN and stuff. Um, and we plan for the future to have similar deployments, but with a little config changes. So we have, um, currently we have two instances running, one for like the normal party member uh, members, um, or the public instance, and one for our uh, chairman of the, uh, of the whole pi of the Pirate Party of Germany and which have custom settings with uh, other pet types available and other storage limit and things like that. So, um, yeah, we, ch uh, or I chose on that time to uh, get with Git. The CryptPad stuff ins is inside the Git repository and I said, yeah, just fork it, put our custom changes inside Git and Git keeps track of everything and it works. Till now it works very, uh, very well. So like Friday, I debugged stuff and Git helped me a lot to uh, find a bug I put in because of our customizations. So yeah, deployment and updates. Deployment is as easy as install Node.js, install NPM, install Bower, then install, in our case, install Nginx for uh, putting the certificates around and adding some other stuff which might be helpful for the future. 
and just git, git uh, first time setup, git clone, uh, add the systemd config file, and you're good to go. Um, update process is as easy as git fetch, git checkout, the specific br uh, specific branch for me is ppad to uh, ppad underscore version number, and then git pull and yeah restart cryptpad and update uh, update is made. I prepare the updates on uh, my uh, on my PC at home, put it onto git, and then just check out and pull and uh, update made. Yeah, um, one huge problem we have uh, we had around in yeah one huge problem we had in uh, our party was oh no you shut down the crypt at uh, other pads but we don't well, we want to use uh, keep uh, keep using it and now uh, it's horrible and it's strange and we have stuff so yeah. The one thing is at the pet teams, like we have one team for the press of the whole party. We have one team for the public relationship of the whole party. We have one team for uh, the press of Van württemberg We have many teams around and it's easy to, because of the right management, you have a team say, these persons are allowed to, or may get into the team and see all pets. You don't have to share passwords and stuff like that. Uh, with CryptPet, CryptPet has shared folders. So you just create a shared folder, um, share that link to the persons who may enter this team, and it's fine. Then speaking links, they don't or we don't have an, uh, stuff like speaking links. So it's um, like ppad, uh, piratepad.de uh, slash p slash like, um, uh, yeah, like a yeah, speaking link. Yeah, um, we don't have this with CryptPad because there's a key transmitted in the URL. So uh, we don't have that, but currently we're creating like a short, short link service for uh, pads that should be publicly available f um, to use or which um, change regularly like the protocols of the chairman sessions where we talk about stuff which is every two weeks and currently it's Opening the WordPress, uh, opening our WordPress, current link to the pr protocol, change it, and yeah. <laughs> but with that, uh, with the short link stuff, it will be possible to have like a speaking link for persons we say they may use it, and um, yeah, uh, yeah, without breaking the security and privacy aspects of CryptPad. And then automatic exports. We have currently some guys around um, with uh, which, oh, like, the Etherpad has like an API or an export feature with a link where you can get the content of the pad as a text file. And we have guys around which do oh, like, if the protocol is finished, open uh, open the script, enter the link, and it's put on the forum, on the wiki, and everywhere published. Uh, we don't have the possibility to, to do that currently, but um, yeah, Aaron will talk about that uh, later on. Then for the migration con uh, strategies for the content, uh, we have, or we had persons asking us, yeah, if I change to the crypt pad, um, how is it? Yeah, I want to keep stuff. Yeah, we said we want to use the crypt pad as an, um, Yes, yeah, and to, to just work on it and delete it afterwards. But for the stuff which is currently uh, working on, like I know that our press really likes our other pet, and I think they will just change on or just say, yeah, please re enable the pirate pet. We want to export stuff. I, yeah, I guess. But um, it's just for the stuff you're currently working on. Download it from the other pad and import it into the crypt pad. Crypt pad has the possibility to do so, and uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So part two. So that's yours, Aaron. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I'm glad I actually made it here in time. Uh, I don't. I don't know if you told the story. Yeah, I missed a, a train this morning, uh, and so I just arrived here. Um, 
Yeah, so... Uh, you, have to, you have to slide down. down sorry? You know, on the right, you have to slide down. Ah, okay. Well. okay, cool. Yeah. That helps. Okay, so, uh, yeah, normally I'm a, a little bit nervous to, to talk in front of everybody, but today I was just nervous about arriving on time. So now I guess I can, I can relax now that I'm actually here. Um, so, yeah, I guess I want to not focus too much on the, the technical aspects and mostly talk about uh, why, we, why we work on CryptPad, who we are. Um, yeah, I guess it's on the slides, uh, our, who, who we are, the development team, uh, why we want to do this, where our funding comes from, because uh, I think that's super important for cryptography projects to talk about, because uh, if you're not selling people's data, then uh, either you don't make money and the project dies, or you rely on volunteer work, and uh, I guess Etherpad was hoping to do that model for a long time, and... Uh, well, they're, they're gone now, right? So, uh, at least for the Pirate Party. Uh, and yeah, then getting into our upcoming features. Um, so who am I? I'm Aaron McSween. I'm known online as uh, ANSYS. Uh, I'm from Canada and I moved to France to, to work on CryptPad. Um, and yeah, basically I, I think of myself as a, a privacy engineer, which is kind of a, a newish term. And basically the idea is a database engineer optimizes for, uh, for data, fast databases and a privacy engineer optimizes for, for privacy. Uh, and a part of that is uh, getting to know the community and uh, what, what they expect. So if you, uh, if you just look at the, uh, the content and encrypt it, uh, maybe people are expecting to hide the metadata as well and maybe they don't. Uh, you can do different techniques and maybe they'll be really expensive and so slow that you can't actually deploy it in, in practice. So knowing, knowing the audience is, is a big part of what we do. Um, so I said I, I moved here from Canada and uh, I moved here to work for a company called XWiki SAS uh, based in, in Paris, France and basically what what XWiki does is uh, knowledge management. It's a Java big Java platform that has extensions and uh, it's used by, um, I guess, big and small companies to, to handle their, their information. Uh, Amazon uses it internally for, for their knowledge management solution. So uh, that's, that's all open source. And basically, uh, the company has been in business for 15 years doing knowledge management, but um, caring about giving back to the, the ecosystem. It's not really uh, this, uh, this audience, I guess. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not gonna try and pitch XWiki, but, um, but basically we care about open source and sustainability because we've been in business for 15 years. We've never accepted uh, venture capital or, or anything like that. Um, so it's all basically uh, client projects, sponsored development and, and, and uh, that sort of thing. So my role is uh, the project lead. I started what, December 2015, and I was just a lowly uh, developer at the time, and uh, the guy who started the project, Caleb, Caleb Delisle, uh, he left the company last August, and I stepped in to, to lead things. Um, and right now, we're a two-person development team, so uh, I'm doing crypto and server-side stuff, and uh, my colleague, Jan is doing most of the client-side stuff, which is actually um, the bigger part of the job. And I'll get into that maybe. Um, so yeah, why am, why am I motivated to work on this sort of stuff? Uh, basically, I got interested in cryptography and decentralized technologies and things like that, uh, I would say. Um, with the Arab Spring when, uh, when the government went and shut off the internet in, in Egypt and, and other places. And I really wanted to know why, why is it that somebody can flip a switch and basically turn off a society? Um, and CryptPad is still centralized, so we can, I can flip a switch and turn CryptPad off for everybody, but uh, I think we need to do the, 
the basic steps of getting the, the platform right, and then once we know how to make it usable and people want it, then we can do better steps to uh, make it decentralized and federated, things like that, which is, as it turns out, really hard, but I think doable. We can work towards it. Um, yeah, so I'm part of the crowd that, that says crypto means cryptography and uh, not cryptocurrency. Um, and yeah, basically, uh, if my, my point of view is that if I can uh, make this my full-time job and, and get paid to do it, then I can, I can work full-time building stuff that uh, I believe in. And uh, I think I'm more effective that way if I'm not worried about where is my next paycheck coming from, like how am I going to live. Uh, I can have a basic level of uh, security and, and then I can focus on uh, uh, building stuff that, that I think should exist. Um, yeah, so XWiki, I went over it a bit already, but yeah, we have a, a branch in Romania as well. It's about 40 people. Yeah, I'm a little flustered, so I did all this out of order, I guess. Uh, totally out of order. There we go. Okay, so um, why, why does XWiki want to work on CryptPad? Why, why are they making it happen? Um, so we got our, our first bit of funding as a part of a, a French research project uh, called OpenPass NG, and basically we were responsible for um, building real-time editors. And um, yeah, that was, uh, the French government wanted it because they're worried that all of uh, their information is going towards uh, the American cloud, basically. And uh, XWiki wanted it because it makes us competitive. So if you look at our competitors, competitors, which is like Confluence and I guess some other people, they're all doing real-time stuff. We wanted to do it uh, in basically a peer-to-peer -peer way because uh, then you, you scale better. So um, by doing most of the work on the client and not on the server as Etherpad does, um, you, you, can get, you can support a lot more users. So, um, as it turns out, cryptography is basically the easy part. So if you have a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, algorithm, like that's, that's pretty tough, but then uh, you just need to put a layer of encryption before you send the message to anyone else and a layer of decryption before you receive it, and then you basically have uh, an encrypted editor, which is pretty neat. And XWiki likes this because I go and I talk to a very different audience than they would normally talk to, and that's, that's good PR. So um, that's how we basically turn research into something that's good for the company. Um, and our, our business model is, uh, I mean, I just want CryptPad to keep going. It's okay with me if we sort of break even. Uh, so we just want to pay salaries and keep the work advancing. So we, we rely on uh, French and EU funding. Uh, we just received uh, some, some big grants, a big grant, and we're hoping on another one. Um, and we do subscriptions and donations to cover the rest. So uh, basically, we treat it like a, a public good, and uh, we try to respect our audience, uh, our users, and listen to uh, their needs, and uh, make it so that uh, Everybody wants the project to keep going. Um, right now, as I said, we're, we're two people and we can't really hire if we don't have uh, a little visibility into the future because we hire somebody and then we'll just have to let them go. So we're staying at two, but if we can get more grants, then that lets us expand and do more things. Um, so basically, my goal is to raise uh, raise everybody's expectations on privacy. And when I said about the um, the Arab Spring, why why is it possible that somebody can flip a switch and all these people are disconnected? I would like that uh, everybody sees something like Google Docs and says, okay, why why is it that they can read my my documents? Why why is that okay? Um, and even if it's not CryptPad, that is uh, the product that is eventually adopted and kills Google Docs, uh, as, I, as I hope happens. Um, I just want it to exist so that, so that I can have it, because uh, it's, yeah, I don't like Google. Um, and as the slide says, make, di li make life difficult for surveillance capitalists. So uh, if all the people that are making lots of money uh, by spying on people, I think they should be, I don't want to say homeless, but, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
They should lose their current jobs, maybe, and work on privacy. So uh, where we are now. Um, I said I didn't want to do this too technical, but basically Cryptpad is just, uh, there's the server, which uh, receives messages from people and forwards them. So it's uh, not unlike a, an IRC server. You join a channel, you send a message, and everybody who cares about that content receives it. Um, the server doesn't care about the encryption. It just uh, sends messages, and it's the client's responsibility to uh, encrypt it and decrypt it. Um, the database is just append-only logs, so uh, every time a message comes in, it just gets written down, and uh, again, this simplifies the server's role. It makes us scale a whole lot better. Um, the client has a consensus layer, which is what, uh, what allows you to edit in real time, and two people can make changes at, at once, and it, uh, it resolves itself, uh, in theory. Every now and then we have some bugs, but uh, uh, it settles down eventually. Um, and yeah, the result is basically a, a thick client setup where all of the logic is done in the browser, almost all the logic. Uh, so applications, maybe, uh, who here actually knows Cryptpad already? Okay, yeah, so almost everybody, I don't know. Yeah, I missed some hands maybe, but uh, yeah, so I'll just, I'll skip past this. We do a lot of different apps and it's all, basically we take an open source, uh, client, something like uh, Etherpad, or sorry, not Etherpad, um, CK Editor for our rich text editor, and we just bind it to our real-time consensus system. So uh, we capitalize a lot off of existing open source libraries, and maybe capitalize isn't the right word, but we benefit from it, uh, and it lets us focus on building the privacy parts. Um, these are the mature enhancements that we've built so far. I think I would consider them mature because, yeah, very few of the bugs that we fix are related to this. So Crypt Drive, uh, which is basically, it's, uh, it's a document itself, so you can edit pads in real time, uh, and your user, all your user information is just a different kind of document rendered in a, a special way. And that, yeah, that was kind of the easiest way to implement accounts. Um, we use Scrypt, which uh, derives a, it takes a password and it derives your keys, which lets you unlock your, your drive. Uh, and that's, again, pretty simple. We did some uh, fixes to it recently, which lets you change your password, because before it would just, you, your password was fixed at what it was. So that was a bit tricky, but um, yeah, you have public keys which uh, act as your identity. So when you log in, the server, this confuses a lot of people, um, uh, but the server doesn't actually know your username or your password. Uh, it's just, it sees your keys. So uh, every now and then somebody forgets their password and emails us and asks us to recover their account and they say that uh, here's, here's my username uh, and I have the very difficult job of writing them an email uh, explaining that no, their, their data is gone. Um, that's, I, I'm laughing about it now, but I think that's the, the hardest part of my job. Um, and yeah, so uh, rich, yeah, any, any sort of media, basically that's just uh, uh, images, videos, uh, we do static uploads. Uh, so that's the main part of Cryptpad that isn't real time. And that's just, we embed the keys and the location of a, a blob on the server into other documents and it loads it up. And then, yeah, uh, these basic server-side APIs for uh, relaying messages, we just uh, reuse that for uh, displaying cursors recently, and for uh, chat, we've had that for a while, but it's all, the server-side stuff changes very, very rarely, and uh, most of it is in the client. So um, these are little things that we've, uh, like people have asked for them over time. Expiration, uh, of course, with GDPR, you need to be able to delete people's data, which is tricky because if you don't know whose it is or what it is, um, knowing who should be able to delete it is kind of tricky. So uh, we bind documents to a, a public key. Uh, and that, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard with old documents. But um, yeah, password protection is just uh, we hash yeah, you need the password to get the actual location 
uh, and encryption key because you have a seed and you combine that with, uh, uh, with the password. And so uh, the server is not protecting documents, it's, um, which allows you to brute force it if you want to just guess passwords all day. Um, but it adds a, an extra layer of security so that if you're transferring a link over Facebook, as unfortunately many people do, uh, they can see the, the seed and not, um, uh, Facebook still won't have the password and thus the uh, keys for the document. And shared folders, again, the same as the drive, that uh, is just a different kind of document, so uh, with a special way to render it. Uh, so the hard part, uh, as I said, people send their keys over, over Facebook or um, other things, and we can kind of see this in our referrer logs. Um, uh, so we, I mean, we do, we do watch some things. We see how people are using CryptPad, uh, and it's mostly at the HTTP layer. So uh, we see refers. We see generally what country people are coming from, uh, unless they're using Tor. So uh, use Tor. We try to support it. Um, and uh, yeah, when you're transferring keys uh, outside of uh, outside of the platform over a second band. Uh, it's tricky because you can't know who has access to a document. Uh, and so if you want to um, revoke access, one thing we could do is uh, change the, the encryption keys, change the location and email, uh, not email, message all the, the users the new location. But if you don't know who has been viewing it, you can't actually update that. So um, lack of oversight is really difficult. And, and as I said, people forget their passwords, so uh, don't forget your password. Um, yeah, so uh, we have uh, 250 instances of CryptPad, uh, public instances that, that we know of, and uh, we could view this as, as competition, but uh, this is why I think it's important to come and talk to uh, all of you and explain my motivations that I just want this stuff to exist. So if there's uh, other instances, that means that if I decide to turn evil one day, I can't really, um, I, I can't sabotage the pirate party too much. Maybe I could put in a back door or something, but uh, this is why it's good to have more eyes on the code, uh, more people looking at it, and uh, I hope you review the diffs and especially uh, maybe look at the yes. crypto, I don't know. Um, yeah, so um, we, we added, added an admin panel to try to make uh, Adrian's job easier uh, and, and other people's. We'd like to expand that functionality, but right now it's very basic. Um, we added, uh, I call it encrypted mailboxes. It's not email, it's just the ability to leave a message for somebody uh, and it's encrypted and it uh, prevents anyone else from reading it. So that's just using some public key crypto and the uh, existing append-only log system. Uh, this ties into a notification system, which is just UI, uh, so people see when somebody has uh, sent them a friend request or something like that. And on that note, better, better social integration, so uh, friends and the ability to just send access uh, through, through the system and not have to leave it and go to Facebook. Uh, when Facebook and Google do this, they do it uh, as a means of better capturing uh, revenue and uh, I just, I don't care if you're using our instance or the pirate parties or whoever, I just, uh, just don't send it over Facebook. Um, yeah, so our immediate roadmap is basically, basically going to be uh, dedicated to making all of these problems simpler to solve. Ten minutes left? Okay, thank you. Um, uh, so mutable metadata uh, will allow us to... Uh, change who owns a document. As I said, uh, there's an ownership system that lets you delete things. And right now you can't, uh, you can't give a document to somebody else. And that's mostly, uh, it's, it should be a pretty simple system, to, uh, simple problem to solve, but uh, it takes some work, uh, especially to be backwards compatible. So the idea is, I guess, if you have a different chairman down the road for, or chair, chairwoman, chairperson, uh, for uh, your, uh, for the pirate party, you should probably be able to hand over access to certain things to other people so that if they, yeah, they, you don't want them to delete the old documents. Um, as I said, integrated key delivery. Um, teams as a first class concept, so uh, 
we started with this idea of the document is the central thing and your user account is just a document. Uh, but um, we want to build around this social idea and delegated ownership, I already said that, going way out of order. Um, we, as I said, we've applied for another research grant uh, and basically the point of this is to take all the interesting things in CryptPad and break them out into components that can be easily reused by other platforms. And basically the idea is to, um, to make it so that all of our work is not wasted, that it's not all bundled up in one uh, monolithic platform. And it also makes, it'll make it easier for us to modify the platform, I think, and also for uh, the Pirate Party and others to customize their instance. If they want to just disable a module, maybe they just comment it out and it should just work in theory. Um, that'll come along with uh, desktop and mobile and uh, command line applications, which uh, as Adrian said, uh, there's no script to just get the documents. Uh, so that would be nice to have. And in theory, not that hard if we can just make it run outside of the browser. There's still some browser APIs we depend on. Office support, a bunch of stuff. Password recovery uh, by breaking up your password and giving it to friends. Um, there's very simple and old cryptography for doing that. Uh, and it's mostly, I think, a UI problem, which is not to say it's an easy one, but uh, yeah. Um, most of you already know where it is, and there's the code. And uh, yeah, I just want to thank uh, NLNet, who recently gave us 50,000 euros to uh, develop all this team stuff. Um, C3 uh, Vienna. Uh, is that Ludo? Who's Ludo? Hello. Um, they just donated 500 euros. Uh, somebody else uh, from a security company, I have their Twitter there, donated 500. And um, monthly contributors on our Open Collective, which is opencollective.com open slash cryptpad. Um, there's some people giving 50 euros a month, and that adds up to basically the same amount that C3 is giving us, which is really cool. Um, and that's how you can get involved. Uh, I don't think we need German translations, because you're, you're all awesome at, <laughs> like, at keeping it up to date. Uh, but maybe, maybe Adrian wants the help, I don't know. Um, and yeah, you can contact us, so if there's time left for questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. All right, thank you. Uh, I am actually, I am very grateful that you intend to continue this service so I can still plan my birthday parties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have 10 minutes left for questions. Uh, I, I see one. I can come over. Yeah, we never know what people are using CryptPad for. So yeah, right. <laughs> birthday party planning. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hi, I am also a member of the Pirate Party. I have uh, three questions. Uh, the first one is the uh, client side performance. Mm -hmm. um, even if CryptPad is idling, it's using a lot of CPU power and uh, the fan of my notebook turns on. Uh, okay. Do you have any um, improvements uh, coming there? And uh, the other question is, is uh, do you have any um, improvements coming for the um, colorful highlighting of the ah. authors? <laughs> we talked about and, this yesterday. Um, I asked other pir uh, pirates if they also have <laughs> some complaints and they also um, mentioned the export function um, mm. to get it into the wiki automatically and um, do you have anything there to come? Uh, Adrian mentioned it when you weren't here yet that you would talk about that. Right, so uh, I have a terrible memory so I'll try to keep those three questions in mind. Uh, what? So uh, I'll start with number two, the coloring. Um, that's kind of an easy thing in Etherpad because the server knows everything and it can take the whole history and, and, and yeah, then... That's, that's how, it's, uh, how it's done by uh, the Etherpad. It's, yeah, you have every keystroke and you have match to the keystroke who did it. So it's just getting all the keystrokes as if you open an Etherpad, it's getting all the database, getting the keystrokes and reassemble the file and with that the etherpad uh, colorizes the stuff. 
So yeah. So so for Cryptpad, we kind of need to do a, a parallel system of uh, here's the thing that keeps track of the uh, what the content is, and then you need a, a second system which keeps track of what parts of that content belong to whom. And uh, we were talking about this yesterday. Basically, uh, what is it required for? Do you need cryptographic proof of this person wrote this section? Or do you need it just for uh, usability? It makes it easier to read. Uh, and depending on the use case, uh, it can be very easy or very hard. Uh, but in either case, because the work is being done client-side, it can be significantly heavier uh, for, the, for, for the client, which takes me to question one, which is performance. Or was that number three? No, I don't this know. was number one. OK, yeah. So uh, I think I would need to see. I mean, my, my fan doesn't spin, so uh, I, would need, I would need to see why your fan is spinning, and then maybe I can, I can answer that better. Um, so yeah, maybe we can take a look at it. Uh, question three, I forget. Yeah, I tried. Export function. Export, yeah. Uh, maybe it's already there. Uh, not from the command line, but if you go to your settings page, there's a way to export your full drive, and we could, I mean, that's, I guess not what you want, but we could uh, make it able to export either a uh, subset of the drive or um, a shared folder or something like that. And uh, I guess the, are you going to your settings? Yeah. Um, no, you have, uh, yeah, export you have. Oh yeah, you can export the pad. But again, this is uh, not from the command line. So that if we get this other research project that uh, is all about breaking things down into parts, uh, then it will be very easy to just use this stuff from the command line. Right now we kind of built everything just to run in the browser and that sucks, yeah. But anyone else? Up. Oh. Hi. Uh, one question, as you are working with X XWiki, mm. uh, so CryptPad is somehow integrated into XWiki, so you can just click on edit and then edit a wiki page uh, it's, in uh, CryptPad? We have, uh, so XWiki is extensible and there's an extension which handles uh, real-time stuff and it's the same client-side code but without the encryption. It doesn't, it's not CryptPad embedded in XWiki or the two uh, talking to each other, it's yeah, okay, just the same. Okay, slightly different question. Is yeah. there a, some API or some means to integrate CryptPad into existing Wiki engine that is not XWiki? Uh, maybe an iframe? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> iframes are pretty cool. Uh, we, I don't know. We could talk more about what what sort of integration you're looking for. I guess about feeding and getting stuff back. Right. I think if if we had those better command line tools, uh, I mean it's it's Node. Like we build everything in JavaScript, so anything that could call a script could get the content, and then maybe that would be okay. If you want your existing server to be able to read the encrypted documents and pull them in, if that's what you mean, then. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we could talk more about what what that would look like for you. Yeah. Anyone else? I don't see um, any hands. Yeah, okay, if there are no further questions, I still have one. Uh, ah. uh, I've seen your, your cryptpad.fr, so uh, it's in cooperation with French uh, uh, yes. people. Uh, I wonder, do, uh, do you know about the organization they call Framasoft? Yes. Ah, so, so are, they, are you working together with them? Because they also, they serve like other pads and yeah. spreadsheets, like same functionality. I've met, uh, I guess, the person who started it. And I mean, we end up at a lot of the same conferences. So we, uh, <laughs> we, we sort of know each other. We're not actively working together. We've talked about um, kind of what would it like, uh, I mean, the thing is, we're we're both open source projects, so we both know like their code is available if we want to use it. Our code is available if they want to use it. Um, uh, we're not planning any serious integration, but I think we have a lot of the same goals in mind. Um, just self-hosting and making it easier for people. But 
yeah, no explicit plans. All right. So, uh, any more questions? I don't think so. Then, uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Is this? Uh, <laughs>